Hello, Connect. We are so glad that you're able to join us today. Let's just take the next few minutes to worship together. that burns in the darkness there is a hope that washes the fear away there is a peace that settles around us it is your love that sets our hearts ablaze there is a light that burns in the darkness there is a hope that washes the fear away. There is a peace that settles around us. It is your love that sets our hearts ablaze. Father, we're on our knees with every heartbeat we bring you this offering lord come and fill this place father we're crying out spirit we need you now glorious love surrounds us lord come and fill this place there is a king that reigns in victory strong enough to save. We feel it rising up from the ashes. It is your love that overcame the grave. Hey guys, welcome to week two of Family Vibe. Don't forget, I know you heard on Good Morning Connect that on June 28th, we get to be in person. Man, it's so, 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 so exciting about, about that because we get to come together, see each other, tell each other hello. There's so many uh, uh, 
um, people that are excited about doing that. So I can't wait to see you in a couple weeks live. But today we are going to go into week two of our series called Family Vibes. And the title of today's message is called The Journey. Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 through 13 is the text for the whole month because I want to bring to you what a family vibe means. What it does it mean to be part of God's family? And it kind of goes into 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 through 13 says this. The human body has many parts, but many parts make up the whole body. That means that me and you are members of the body of Christ, that we each play a part of the body. Some of us are fingers, some of us are ears, some of us are the tongue or the heart. It takes a lot of, lot of parts, a lot of members of something to make up one whole body. And, 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 and Paul explains that you and I are part of one body. He goes on and says, some of us are Jews, some of us are Gentiles, some of us are slaves, some are even free. But we all have been baptized into one body, one spirit, and we all share the same spirit. So the title, again, is called The Journey. I want, I want, uh, last week we talked about changing your family tree. And as you make that decision to change your family tree, as you give yourself away to Jesus, you start your path on a journey. And to start this journey, you first have to become a member of God's family. This is not a country club. It's a membership. We're one member of a whole body. So how do you become a member of God's family? I know a lot of people, when they're not a member of God's family, they're not part of a church, they're not really considered of um, or not knowing how to do that, they tend to stay away because they think they have to be something to get something. Well, let me explain to you what it means to be a member of God's family. John chapter 3, verse 3. Jesus said this, I tell you the truth. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. That explains everything. He said, hey, to be a member of God's family, you have to be born again. If not, you cannot see it. You won't be able to understand it. You won't even be able to be part of it. And the only step to be part of God's family is this one word. Write this down. This is all you need to know. Maybe you're a new believer. Maybe you, you are interested in, in Jesus, but you don't know how or what it means to be a member of a family, here's number one, and the only thing that matters is salvation. Salvation is it. There's no other part. There's no other thing. There's no, there's no other 17-page uh, membership uh, things that you have to write out to be a member of God's family. When you give in your life to Jesus, you became born again. Paul goes and explains what happens here. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 says, Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. Let's skip to verse 4. But God, in his rich in mercy, and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. And it is only... God's grace that you have been saved. What that means is that you don't have to earn salvation. You don't have to earn God's family. You don't. You, you don't have to earn to be part of God's kingdom. When you are born again, when you give your life to Christ, when you make Christ your Lord and your Savior, you become a member of his family. And what he wants is a member of the family is to be part of a church. You're one member, and we become into one body in multiple locations, multiple areas, multiple areas of the world. It's, it matters. And becoming part of God's family is a new beginning. It, it, it's when you start that salvation and you start to, and you accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, 
he or she has passed, passes from death to life and starts their journey of their walk with God. I'm telling you, it's so important that you get this. There's so many of you listening right now, I know, that have given your life to Jesus, that joined a church, joined our church, that lives on the background of the church and really never feels like you are really part of the family sometimes. You tend to hang back. You tend to push back. You tend to not get really involved. You just do this out of like a job, like you got to do this. No, we get to do this. Because we were going to die in our sins, Jesus wiped all that off. He, he said, no, you don't have to do all that. Believe that I am Lord and Savior, that I rose again. My blood already washed your sins away. When you do that, you are born again. You start in a new journey. You become a new person. You become part of a new spiritual family. And if you're part of Connect Fellowship Church, you are family to us. Yeah, we know that the body of Christ in a whole, like multiple churches, are multiple families. Just like your mom and dad and your great-grandma and great-grandpa had kids, and they had kids, and they had kids. Yeah, we're all one family unit, but we all are raised up in multiple homes. Same thing in a church. We all are raised up. you got to be part of a family. If you were a child without a family, you'd be on the streets. Your life would not go well, would it? So God says, hey, we're going to create the church, and the church is going to set you to, to be an example and be the body of Christ. It's going to be a bride, and each family is one whole. And we all have a purpose and a mission, and we heard that last week, is to see people change their family tree by becoming fully engaged followers of Jesus. And becoming part of God's family is a new beginning. But a lot of times, people who give their life to Jesus, and I see this so many times, they come to church and expecting to be like everyone else. That, or they come in not feeling like everyone else. They, and they get really nervous, and they don't come back, and they're like, well, maybe this was not for me. Well, let me say this. We're all one body, but we're all in different phases of our journey. Every one of us is in a different phase of our journey. So maybe you just given your life to Christ and you come to church and you feel very uncomfortable. It's okay. Maybe you've been a Christian for 30 years and you come to church and you feel like you're not being used. It's okay. We're all on a different phase of our walk with God. And we all start in phase one of our journey, all of us. And, and today I kind of want to dig into more of a a believer who is not as mature as they should be, or maybe you're just giving your life to Christ. Maybe, maybe you're just starting your phases out with God. Maybe you're trying to understand. Maybe you've been a Christian your whole life, and you just never experienced God. We all start out in this phase one, and this is what we're going to talk about today. And then we'll, we'll pick a couple other phases up over the next couple weeks. Phase one is called the spiritual infant, a spiritual infant. Jesus, remember what Jesus said. He said that you have to be born again. When you give your life to Jesus, that you are born again. That means that when you are born, not out of your mother's womb again, but spiritually born again. So you start out your spiritual man, a spiritual woman. You start out your spiritual life as an infant. And some spiritual infants, though, have been Christians for a long time, but they've been stuck in this stage. They never really grew up spiritually after they were saved. They attended church for a long time, and they carry their Bible, and that's all they know what it means of a Christian life. See, it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. You, you, you don't have to stay there. And I know here at this church, it, we long to see you grow up spiritually. Your physical growing up is going to happen because it's natural. God just makes us grow up. But spiritual man takes a little work. Your salvation is free. He, he died on the cross, so you don't have to pay that price. 
But for you to grow spiritually, you have to purposely connect yourselves inside of a body, which is considered a church. And so maybe you're on a fence of being part of a church. Maybe you are part of this church, and you've been coming to this church, but you just feel like you're stuck. Maybe you have ideas that you don't know if you're a spiritual infant or you're, what phase you are on. So how do you know what stage you're on? How do you know if you're a spiritual infant? This is not an insult to you. This is to encourage you. If you are here, that you go, okay, cool. Like, this is normal. Like, all right, now I know what to do. Now I know where I'm at. The greatest thing that someone can do for them own, their own selves in their spiritual walk is to know exactly where they are. If you are lost, the, the, the worry and the, and the stress of being lost is because you don't know where you're at. But if you found a map, it's like going to the outlet mall, right? Like I was at the outlet mall the other day, and Dawn's like, hey, I got to go to one of these stores. And we're like, which section is it in? So we're driving to every section. Nope, that's not it. Nope, that's not it. Nope, that's not it. And you're like, oh, come on. Like, I thought it was in this section. No, it's not. It. It's in. So we're sitting there trying to figure it out. Well, things got really good is when we figured it out. And, of course, the store was closed. But when we found the spot of knowing where we were going, it was like, okay, now we can work on the journey, on the pathway to getting to where the destination is. And so many times people are in this stage of infancy, and they think they're up here, in their walk with God, and they don't have a clue. Let me explain to you. Let me, if you say some of these phrases or some of these uh, phrases that I'm about to say in, in this stage, you're probably at that, that level in the beginning. You need to know that. And we'll help you walk that path to discipleship of getting your way through the family, just like your family at home. When you were growing up or maybe you have kids, your kids just don't come out mature. Now, they think they are. But at the same time, you got to let them know they're only five. You're not 13. And when they're 13, they think they're 21. They want to start driving like mine. Hey, can I drive? No, you're 13. Yeah, I can drive, though. I drove a golf cart. Like, yeah, okay, cool. But not at 70 miles an hour. You know? So you, you got to break their stage. Say, look, you're only 13. Don't rush it. This is where you're at. Be okay with that. You'll, you'll, you'll be able to drive, and when you do drive, you ain't going to want to drive because you're going to get stuck in traffic somewhere. So here are some of the phrases that people say when they're in a stage of infancy. If you ever said, why do I need to go to church every Sunday? What's the point? If you say that, then you know where you're at right now. You know, oh, wow. I say that all the time. Well, I don't, but I'm like maybe you say that all the time. Well, then... You're in the first stage of your walk with God. And that's good news. You know that now. How about this? I don't need anyone. I just need Jesus. I'm talking, I'm talking to a bunch of Christians who say that. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't need church. I don't need, to, I don't need to go to anything. I don't need to give. I don't need to do any of that. All I need is Jesus. And I'm looking at them going, that's not biblical. That's not. Jesus just said that we're one body. We're one member to, to a body, and he, he expects us to be part and play a part of that. He paid the price. He owns you now. Just know that. When you give your life to Jesus, you give up your ownership of your life, and you submit to the Father in heaven. And then he has a, 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 a church that he built in multiple areas, multiple family units, so you can grow spiritually in there with people who are mature and who love you and who wants to get to know you, but who will challenge you. See, that's a healthy family. That's what they do. You need a family, which is considered a church. And we want you to be a member of Connect Fellowship. Maybe you've been coming. You just never really plugged in. Maybe you've just been sitting on it. Get involved. Involved, and we'll get into what that looks like a little bit. I know for me, when I first got saved, I went into a church. I, I was very coachable, and the pastor said, do this. I'm like, all right, cool. And then we plugged in the church. We just found every place that we can get involved, and we got involved. And what that did, it taught us 
to hang out with other believers, and we grew that way. But if I would have sat back and just came to church and left, I would never grow really spiritually. Here's another phrase. If I pray and read my Bible, that's all I need. No, that's not true. When two to three come together, it didn't say by yourself come together. It says when two to three come together that Jesus is amongst us. Is God with us if you're by yourself? Of course he is because he lives within us. But the healing and the power and the place of, of seeing miracles happen is when two to three come together. And, and we all believe in the same purpose and the same mission. And we all become power. We, we get power when we are together. Triple braided cord, does, it's, it's not, it doesn't break easily. But one does. So if you say, if I pray and just read my Bible, that's all I need, then you probably are in this stage. Here's another one. I provide for my family. I don't got time. Or that, that's, that's my, my uh, growing up phrase. I, got, I ain't got time, right? No, I'll say it this way. I provide for my family. I don't have time for church. It's kind of like tithing. Coming to church doesn't give, get you to heaven. Let me, let me just say that. Tithing doesn't get you to heaven. It's, it's the commitment and the dedication of letting something go, of giving something up. Saying, God, I value you so much, I'm willing to give this up to make sure that I'm right with you or that I can live in your family of members' home. And, and what you're saying is when you say I don't have time for church is that I don't have time for my spiritual family. I don't have time for my family. Imagine if you just worked all the time and your kids never seen you. How do you think your relationship with those kids are going to be when they get older? And you're going to go try to coach them or tell them, and like, you've never been around. Like, how are you going to tell me what to do? I raised myself. See, when, when you live that life, you have to take care of yourself. I know when I met my wife, she was kind of like on her own since she was 14. Her dad left, and her mom was a single mom with three kids, and my wife kind of had to raise herself. And then when I met her, she was she was very independent woman. But that's not healthy in a marriage. And we had to work through that, that, that she just can't take care of herself, that we got to be one in Christ, just like a marriage. we got to be one in Christ so we can do something with God when two to three come together. But if me and her just got married and we stayed in our separate ways and we never really, we just worked all the time and never really impacted our family life, we would probably not be together and our kids would be destroyed by that. See, you got you to gotta hear what you're saying when you say these things. Church is not just something you go to. Church is family, guys. And we need it. And we need each other. I need you. You need me. We need each other. We, we totally do. Because without each other, we can't ever fully be developed in our spiritual walk. Because iron sharpens iron. Challenging each other grows us. We need to be loved by each other. We need to be known. Here's another phrase, the last phrase. I don't want to hang out with other Christians because they are going to judge me for not knowing the Bible. I heard that a bunch of times. That just shows that you are just in a spiritual infant stage. You just got born again. And born again doesn't mean years. You could be born again and been 10-year infant. It's okay. But don't start now. Start moving your pathway to growing in your walk with God. And you need a family to do that. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Here's something that Paul, that, that it, I mean, Peter says, hey, this is what you need to do. If you're a spiritual infant or, or you're growing in your walk with God or you, you're not fully matured yet and you don't really know how to do this thing. You think you do, but you really don't. Guys, we never know enough. We don't. We always growing. No matter, I'm the lead pastor of the church, but I have uh, people that, that, that influence me spiritually. I have spiritual fathers that impact my life on a daily basis. I never say I ever arrive. I'm consistently and constantly and want to grow. And then there's times where you 
you get in a new leadership level or a, a new place, and then you become a spiritual infant in that area again, and you got to grow through that. See, it doesn't stop. It's always, you're always doing this spiritually. You never really make it until you see Jesus face to face in heaven. And that's a great path to walk. But the older you get, the more wisdom that you do have because there's more life experience. But you got to know, listen to Acts chapter 2, verse 42. This is what I want you to hear. All the believers, all, devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and to the fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. What he's saying is, all the believers devoted themselves to the local church. And at a church, we teach, you devote yourselves to watch, you take notes, you apply to your life, and you grow. We fellowship, we get to know each other, we share meals together, because that's what southern people do, right? We share meals. Can't have a conversation without some food. And we pray together. See, plug in. Just, just be part of the local body. And in this state is important. Like when you're a spiritual infant, it's important that you plug into your spiritual family as much as you can. Because most people, when they come into this walk with God, as we our spiritual infants, or wherever you are, it doesn't matter where you're at, but I want you to hear this. We always come into a new level in our spirit walk with old beliefs and culture beliefs. We always do that. This is what I know. This is tradition. I'm not learning anything else new. Well, then you got an issue there. You probably ought to check your infancy level if you're there. And because most people have old beliefs and culture beliefs, they just don't know how to be a true follower of Jesus Christ. They become confused. They, they say, this ain't for me. I don't know. And then we tend to go to family, 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 to family. Not saying that going to different churches trying to find your family is, is a bad thing. But I'm saying eventually one of them has to be good. And meaning this, when you walk in, you just know. And you got to stick it out with good or bad. If you got mad or not, you don't leave family. You work through it because you're never going to find a perfect family. That is why in this stage of spiritual infancy, your dependency level is so high, it's at the all-time high. You don't expect a baby to take care of itself. No, a baby is very dependent on a mom and dad. And you have to get this as, as much as you can. And, and, and get with someone who can teach you and hold your hand. That's why uh, we have a, our core value means be purposefully connected. That's a, it's such, such an important phrase that you have to be purpose. you got to purposefully get connected. And you are very dependent even if you don't want to be. If you're in that level of spiritual infancy, then you better be dependent. That means you need to ask the right questions. You need to get involved in small groups. You need to go to outreaches. You need to plug in. If you, if you don't have time for all that and you do have a busy life and you've got tons of kids and all that stuff, totally understand, then guess what? You need, to, you need to find one person that you can do this life with and you read the word together. I know when I got saved, my pastor that led me to Christ wound up moving to North Dakota. He just left after three months and I'm like, I had nobody and it was an old church. I'd say old, everybody was like in their 90s and it was only like 8, 9, 10, 12 people there. It wasn't a lot of people, and we were like 20, okay? So, so I had nobody at my age to really help me. And I had a guy at work that was at my age, but he's been a Christian his whole life, and he was a very uh, devoted uh, uh, Christian to his church. He was a leader in his church. He led his youth group and all that. He was kind of like a youth pastor, played basketball at college and all that stuff. So we, we, we became good friends, and, and I asked him every day, would you, would you help me with the Bible? And he said, yeah, every day for lunch, let's go to lunch. And every time we got together, it wasn't every day, but every time we got together, he would bring his Bible out and he would teach me the fundamentals of being a believer. And he would show me scripture and the important 
areas of foundation that he set in place for me. So when I did find a church at the time, I was churchless. When I found a church, I knew that I had to get plugged in. I needed that other spiritual uh, man in my life that, that can help and raise me up. That's why it's so important, guys. This is so important. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping you hear this today. You know, I know you, you might want me to preach with these great phrases, but without this foundation, you will not make it as a believer. you just not. Without a church, you cannot make it. I don't care what you say. You can't. I've been doing it without a church for this long, and I guarantee this, you're in that level of infancy, and you don't even know it. Come on. Come on. Get involved. Get plugged in. Be part of this family. You know better. I believe in you. Listen to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 6 through 8. This is, this is Paul writing to the church his heart. And this is a heart phrase from me to you. As for human praise, we have never sought it from you or anybody else. So that's as Paul saying, hey, church. Look, from a human phrase, we never sought to try to get something from you. As a pastor, I don't, I'm not here to try to motivate you so I can get something from you. I, I'm here to move you so you can get closer to Jesus and you can grow a family who are believers who can impact our world for God. And you can be at another level spiritually. What that That is the heart. That's what Paul's saying here. As an apostle of Christ, we certainly had the right to make some demands of you. But instead, we were like little children among you. Or we were like a mother feeding and caring for her own children. We loved you so much that we shared with you not only God's good news, but our own lives too. Dawn and I planted this church with the heart of giving our life away to you. We are leaders who actually want to see who really, really, really care that you grow spiritually, not in rules and regulations, but that you're loved, that you feel part of a family. So when you're in this stage, don't get discouraged. Understand, you will not know everything at this stage. If you think about it, like an infant, if you think about an infant, let's say a premature baby, when moms have their kids premature, like well before the due date, what happens is the nurturing of that child, the touch of the nurses, the touch of the mom, the holding of that baby as much as they can is more powerful than medicine, than anything else. There's something about nurturing a child to Hold them and hug them and love them and talk to them. And they, they giggle. They can't even speak, but they giggle and they mess up. And they get a little older and they, they start to fumble their words. And they start to fall down when they start walking. But you get to hold them. And I'm telling you guys, that's what we all need in every phase of our walk with Jesus. We need that hug. Maybe not just the physical hug, but the, I got you, bro. Or, Hey, girl, you good. Whatever how you say that. So when you're in a stage, don't get discouraged. You have to be dependent on your spiritual family. You do. You, you, it's a dependency. You have to. God created it that way so we can grow together. So let, let me end with this. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. This is, a, this is to you. Don't forget that at one time, this is before your salvation, you did not know God. So you're way ahead of the rest of the culture of the world. You're so far advanced when you got saved that you are here. Even though we're talking about spiritual infancy, you see things that most people in this world can't even see. That's encouraging to you. So you do have value to bring even in that phase of your walk. Verse 13. But now... You have been united with Christ Jesus, and once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. Let's skip down to verse 13. 
I meant verse 19. So now you Gentiles, now you infants, you Christians, you spiritual infants are no longer strangers and foreigners. You're citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are part of a church no matter where you are at with God, no matter where you're at. Even as a non-believer, you come to church, you can walk your way into the membership of God's family easily by giving your life away to Jesus. You are all members of God's family, the Bible says. It says it right here. You are all citizens along with all God's holy people, and you are members of God's family. And together, we are his house, is his church, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, and the cornerstone is Jesus Christ himself. And We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord through him, You Gentiles, you believers, are also being made part of his dwelling where God lives by his spirit. Can I get an amen? Guys, I want you to know that you are a member of God's family. You are a member of this body of Christ called Connect. You play a valuable part. You are valuable. You are loved. You are known. And we're going to challenge you. And challenge you means we want to see you grow to places you've never been. We want you to experience the Holy Spirit for the first time. We want to teach you how to pray. We want to teach you how to lead someone else to Jesus. How to raise your family up in walking with God without rules and regulations. But as a walk, walking with Jesus, not walking uh, away from Jesus. I'm telling you, when you can get to this point of making the decision to be in a fully engaged follower of Jesus, no matter what phase or level of infancy, of adulthood, no matter where you're at in between, that you are loved by your Father God and you are loved by this church. So let's pray. If you need prayer, go ahead and comment on at the bottom. We have host team members ready to pray for you. Message us on Facebook. I'm telling you guys, we just want to see you become what God sees in you, not what you see in yourself. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we just thank you for each person right now making a decision to knowing, Lord, that they are spiritual infants. Lord, that they, they, they finally found out that they're normal. They finally found out they, they can work there in, in where they're at, God, that it's not embarrassing, but it's, a, it's, it's that they're so more advanced than the rest of the culture of this world that when they're giving their life to Jesus, that they are a member of your family. And God, you love them so much that you made it easy to be part of your family through the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you for that. Father, we thank you for every disciple being made at Connect Fellowship Church. We thank you for every commitment level that they just move in just a little bit closer, God, to the family. And Father God, that we can be an impact to the world for your son, Jesus Christ. We give you praise for this and all the glory. And everybody said, amen and amen. Come on, let's give these people some, let's give God some praise. Let's let's thank these guys for for giving their life to Jesus today or making that full commitment. Well, hey, guys, just to let you know, June 28th is coming. We are going to be in person. We need to know. Go to the app. Download the app. Let us know. There's a survey on the app. Press it. Fill it out. Let us know if you're going to be able to come. We are going to have family ministries. Your kids could come. They're going to be safe. We're going to protect everybody. There will be guidelines for you to come in. The guidelines are right on the app. You can't miss it. It's on Facebook and all that. You you can't miss it. Go to the app. It says guidelines. Hit it. We put it in small bullet points for people like me that's, that, that will actually read it. Because it was in paragraph form, I probably wouldn't read it. And you probably wouldn't either. So we said, hey, let's keep it simple. Each point, if you have a question, please email us at info at connectfellowship.church. Message us on Facebook or you can go right there on the app, and you can fill out your next move card. It just says your next move. Fill that out. If you have any questions, reach out to us. We would love to answer those. Well, let's get ready to give God his tithe and his offering. We want to thank you for being generous in all what you have done through even the COVID-19. Our church has been super generous on everything we've done. We've given to Guatemala. We had outreaches. We've given to the homeless. We've given back to the community. We planted churches. There's church planters planting in September, and it's been an amazing way to just to give out 
and see God's glory just shine through your giving. So we want to thank you for that. Well, we're going to end this message with you giving today. You can give through the app or online. You can uh, mail in a check if you'd like. All those, all that information is on Good Morning Connect. You can go there or just uh, rewatch uh, or go to the app or the uh, website. We'll give you all the instructions on how to do that. Well, let me pray. Let's end it with this. Let's end it with a prayer. How about that? Let's pray over every person today financially today through this whole COVID deal and us getting back to work in phase two. So let's pray. Father, Lord, we just thank you for the 28th as we come. Protect everybody's health. Protect our health so this COVID can be eliminated out of this country, Father God, and out of the world. Lord, we thank you for every giver as they give uh, 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 cheerfully, Father God, that you bless them in ways they never imagined. We thank you for this message. We thank you for allowing us to be part of your kingdom and your family. And in Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. Love you guys. Love you, love you, love you. See you in a couple weeks in person. If not, connect devotions right at 7 o'clock.